Hello, Teresa back again. I hope you're all keeping well. Before we start, I would just like to say a good welcome to some new people and some old people, I have to say. And I'm going to quickly run through these. And I'm going to start with Kylara, Jean Peter Artist, or Jean Peter Artist, Kim, Patricia, Dana, or Dana, Amy's Journal Addiction, Tonya or Tona, Paz, Corin, Nita, Chris, Cynthia Black. Hello, Cynthia again. Um, thank you for your. I'm not sure if I thanked you last time, but thank you for your little bit of um, knowledge there about burlap and Hessian. Big hello to Krishna, Heather, Karen. Therese or Therese that's very much like my name and Eileen and Eileen your, your comment made me laugh because I could just imagine you ready with your cocoa and really ready to work so I'd just like to welcome you all um, the new ones and now I'm going to say my oldies so big welcome to you all and I really hope you enjoy this having said all that let's start this um, no prizes for guessing who painted this. Pablo Picasso painted this in about 1937. In fact, I think it was 1937 after the Guernica. This isn't one of his protest paintings about the Civil War. This is actually based on Dora Mar. I'd like to keep to the, the colours, but not necessarily in this sequence i don't actually want to copy it i just want to use it for inspiration first thing to do is to take two copies of this put your picture onto the window where or a light box where the light's shining through from behind and then you could put your tracing paper over it and just trace around it you want two you want one to cut up for your template for your shapes and you want the other one as reference now the red lines here are where I decided to make my shapes I've divided this into I think it's 10 10 shapes I thought that would be easier to do the only um, piece that I really wanted to keep was the, this piece here the handkerchief and the mouth which to me is almost the essence of the painting. I've divided the painting up into 10 pieces. Okay, and I've divided the face up as well. This part, the face, I divided that up into two. I'm not keeping this as one shape. You'll end up with two pieces like this. And then you're going to number them. Do make sure you match the numbers up here. I've used the alphabet so as not to get confused with the face. Next thing to do, and this is a real fun thing to do, is just cut them out. Um, what bit shall I start with? Let's we we'll start at the beginning. Now, if I can just say before I do start cutting, try to keep this area outside of the face intact as much as you can as one shape and the reason for that is that it will make it easier to fit the shapes together if you have guidelines I want to cut out this start at number one first so I'm just very very carefully going to cut up here making sure to follow the lines the red line right so that's quite a large piece that one oops right, I won't do all these pieces in front of you because that would just be mind-blowing besides that I'm sure you all know how to use scissors and to cut out you'll end up with the hole where the shape where the face is and then you can let's have a look um, 
and then you will know how to fit them in so they all meet and they all match right now I, I'll stick that over here just for a minute I bought in some scraps these are the colors that I'm going to use and as you can see if I go back to here if you notice the colors on here I have gone for the same colors but I'm going to place them differently we have the lovely yellow um, a nice green a pale green um, a darker green there was a touch of dark green somewhere red oh I love red so I'm going to stick that over one side red of the hat so all the colors here are represented you know, like red well it looks as if I intended to use quite a lot of red I don't think you can have enough red or too much red or pink I'm going to yeah where's all that red cut out the red so oh that just goes on there good grief there's nothing to spare there whatsoever there we go hmm. I'm just going to oh there you go nothing to spare that was meant to be this was supposed to be red then so just get my pins just pin this on and then this is going to be cut out and that will be our first piece now all the other pieces will be treated the same way there's nine left now now don't worry about the hat the hat's going to be treated um, differently right at the end well otherwise there's going to be so many pieces that um, we like to get in a little bit of a muddle so that's the first piece this little piece here can just these are paper scissors I should wonder why they're blunt next week now all the other pieces are going to be treated exactly the same so go back to your your that piece there and continue to cut out all the other shapes all the nine shapes you can see here I wouldn't cut out all the tiny shapes here like the fingers and the eyes these can be done in stitchery or applique later the main thing is we actually get the nice big shapes almost as a basis almost as the foundation for the stitchery and some applique okay so I'm going to carry on with that and here we have all the cut out pieces now this is the piece that I was talking about if you can keep the outside edge in intact then that will make it much easier when it comes to piecing these all back together choose your background fabric I've ironed on some violin iron on violin and then I've put calico on the back of that so the violin is sandwiched in between the calico and the background fabric and then I pinned it and tacked it tacked it all the way round so they're all together now they're all attached together and there we go now I'm going to put this what's left of the picture of the templates there just hold it down just with a pin we don't need to be too exact about this it's just to be used as a guide but the pins will stop it from moving around and then we're going to go back to our, re our reference here and sort out how these go on right there's the first shape and that goes there number one around the ear so we're just going to lift lift that off and pin it and pop it there and that matches perfectly so we could stick a pin into that 
in there. Right, the next piece, for some reason I put number nine against number one. <laughs> that makes no sense at all, but it's definitely that piece there. Fits in there beautifully. So then we're going to put number nine here. And there I chose to have some pattern fabric but I wanted it to match this so I've used let's just make that a little bit bigger so I've used a very nice fabric you might have seen this in something before when I used the back the background was nice and it was more suitable to a project that I did a little while ago this time I want to use the right side as I always say never forget to check the background or the back of your fabric because sometimes the back of the fabric is far nicer than the front especially for how we use it so that goes in there and pin that and then where have we got let's have a look the next one would be number two so number two goes that way with the v there and it's got the v there and it fits in there so you see how easy it makes it by doing it this way so that fits there now don't worry i seem to have a little gap here if you end up with little gaps no, that fits fine. I've got some overlapping going on, but that doesn't matter. But any small gaps you have, don't worry, because small gaps can be filled in with stitching later. Just for the time being, we need to get our pieces down like that. So that was number two. That was quite a big piece. Then we have number three, the teeth. And the teeth fit in, you see the teeth there and the teeth there, so the teeth go in there, which is that bit there, and I found these teeth a bit disturbing, I don't know what it is about the teeth, but they do seem to, I suppose it's because they're on show and the, the whole mouth looks so distressed. Number four goes next to number three. Let's have a look in there right there's a tiny bit there I haven't cut out so what I'll do here it's like a little hook bit there oh look I'm using the paper scissors again around there not exact but it doesn't matter so number four in there right is that number four up there that's right number four just loosely pin these number four there number five the fingers the big finger let me move that up the finger that shape there goes in there oh wrong piece That might need reshaping. That bit goes in there. And oh, what are we left with? Number five, number right. Can't see number six. That must be lurking about the table somewhere. And then we add. Well, there's number six. So now we've got number ten. See this bit here, which is a darker red. So it'll be interesting to, to see. You see, number 10 goes there. How this actually, what this actually ends up looking like. That's one of the fun things. At the moment, it's just a lot of shape and colour, and it might possibly bear no resemblance to the Weeping Willow. Oh, willow, that's a tree, isn't it? A weeping, a weeping woman at all. 
But as I say, that is just our inspiration and it doesn't have to look like it. Right, so busy talking. Now where number eight goes that way. Number six will go let's have a look that way there. Last but not least we'll go there. I'm going to take these pins off around the edge. And there we are. Right, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tack all these in place. Now, I'm not going to do them individually. I'm going to do them, as I've done before in the past, just run across them and catch, catch them. Now, I'm not going around all the shapes like that because that's going to take too long and we don't need to. So, all I'm going to do is to just catch them catch them into place don't forget tacking big stitches don't have to be neat just going to catch these into place to hold them and I should do a few rows of this all the way down and catch them into place just across now and the tacking or the basting comes out so don't be don't worry about being too precise with the tacking there we are now I'm going to carry on and do that and as soon as I've done that we can start thinking about the stitches we're going to use and as if by magic they've all been tacked down as you can see I've only clipped them and I haven't gone to the trouble of going all the way round. In fact, that one's only been clipped there and there and there. Let's have a look on the back and you can see, there you go. So don't go to the trouble of going right the way around the edges, unless you feel happy doing it that way. But there's no need as long as you clip each piece in place. The next thing to do, and I think I'm going to start at shape nine, yeah, is stitching. Now, most of this will be done in slow stitch, so that's the running stitch. And I'm going to start here with a nice long needle, narrow needle. Can you see that? Let's don't think that's made any difference, has it? I don't think that's made any difference. It's a nice long needle, it's narrow, has a large eye and a sharp point. And in that, I'm using two strands of embroidery thread. Um, embroidery thread, floss or cotton, whatever you have to hand, two, two strands. And I'm going to start here. Now, when you're doing this, you can actually go right the way around. There are several ways of doing this. You could go from side to side across the two shapes all the way down. Or you could decide to go all the way around the outline. And just keep going round and round and round until you've sewn them all. Or you could do what I'm going to do. I'm going to take each one individually and just sew them one at a time. Right, the slow stitch, let's make that, as you all know by now, just running stitch. Nice, small running stitches. And it's really just a tiny version of tacking stitch. So anybody can do this. There's no secret to do this, no twists and turns. You can vary the length for interest. You could have some long ones against some short ones and that is the contrast part of the design um, principle to contrast whatever you're doing. Shapes large against small, thick against thin. You can, can actually vary the thickness of your thread as well. At the moment we have a nice thread quite fine not too thick not too thin just nice 
you might want to vary that contrast it with something heavier heavier and thicker or something finer to give it a texture we're all about texture so that is my first row is that coming out yes I'm going to follow this all the way around that shape there I might decide after I've done one shape that I'm going to do two shapes together maybe these two the smaller shapes I might combine into one um, this I might do differently because that's quite a large shape but for the time being this is all I'm going to do is just the running stitch or the slow stitch all the way around and end up with rows and rows of related lines just turn it your fabric round and off you go again the direction that you do your stitches is entirely up to you you might do each one in a different way I think I probably will do each one with different coloured thread and using a different direction for added interest I might as well as I've just said use a thicker thread on some of them for um, added texture so this is what will be occupying me for quite a while and as soon as I've made a headway I'll get back and show it to you this is how far I've got now this is what I call and what someone else calls the rubbish stage where you look at it and think oh that looks like a lot of rubbish I'm going to bin it no don't do that this is just the basis so if I pop this back this is why we need to keep it need to line it up line the edges up and that will give you just a little bit of an idea of how it's taking shape now the hat and the hair will be done later but just for the time being we're just going to concentrate on the face I've deliberately left this the mouth um, unstitched everything else has been slow stitch the running stitch but not this because I think this bit is so important and it needs to show the teeth that that will possibly be done i'm covering it up that will that shape will possibly be done last when everything else has been worked out and i can see what's needed here so anyway the next step and we'll just pop that away safely the next step is to not join these they've already been joined but to outline them with like um, this I'm going to outline where these red bits are that's going to be outlined in black in feather stitch so this is actually very similar to crazy patchwork the stitch that we're going to use is the feather stitch and this is some of you have got these we made these oh, a long long time ago and I think this page is the most used page possibly because it's my favorite stitch and for those of you who haven't seen it before it's just a little booklet of stitches that were made some that was made some time ago so I said this is the stitch we're going to use and um, these are done big so you can see them and for that reason so you can see them again I'm just going to go through the, fe the feather stitch for those of you who are new to this and don't know what the feather stitch is so I need to turn sideways on my chair I'm using hessian or burlap see I remembered burlap and a thick wool so you can see them if I were to do it on this type of fabric with ordinary uh, embroidery thread you wouldn't see it so in to the left side and pull it so knot it you need a knot now pull this down the length that you want it so say you want it that length put your thumb over 
and then you're going to come across here and in as wide as you want it keep your thumb there and pull it and you get a nice loop but don't take your thumb off so you're going to keep your thumb there and then between these you're going to come down to the length that you want so say you want the stitch that long you'll come down between them down here and in from the back like that now you can take your thumb off pull it gently you don't want it too tight and then you're going to go down as long as you want it again and you're going to come over here you're going to repeat that stitch but you're coming over this side now keep your thumb in place down as long as you want it in the back and through pull it gently you can take your thumb off now and there you go now you're going to move the th thread round over your thumb and repeat this one so underneath there run it down there come out there Ooh, it's very difficult it's getting dark at the moment oh would you believe it I've done that wrong I need to take that out that's it I went over the edge of the th over there for some reason right so we're going to repeat the first stitch down we come there down here this is a beautiful stitch to do and this is all you're going to do down here and it soon grows so this feather stitch is what I'm going to use as an outline stitch there you go lovely stitch to do so what I'm going to do here, I'll start this side. Now I'm hoping that if I use the black, um, you should be able to see that if I make it a little bit bigger. Let's see. Now I'm going to, I'll start um, here so you can see. If I lift it up, make sure I'm on the camera. Right, in this side, the left, which is the red side, so that side, the stitch we've just done, hold it, then you're going to come over to the white side, in, and then as long as you want it, and there. You see that? It's coming out in the join. first stitch and then just carry on the way that I've just shown you how to do now I will probably take this out to make it smaller this is just to show you that we're going from side to side one side to the other side and it just pulls them in if they need to be pulled together and it gives a really nice effect decorative and it hides the edges this is too big for what I need so I will take that out and I should do a smaller one but that is the effect and I will go around all the shapes with the feather stitch oops can't see I'll go around all the shapes with the feather stitch now to do the feather stitch you need two strands of thread and once again a nice thin pointed needle so it goes right the way through all these layers that you now have okay I'm going to carry on with this and hopefully when I get back to you I'll have done 
all the outlining okay so I'll see you later so here is the finished piece in slow stitch I've also added some uh, blanket stitch here and did as I said put the feather stitch all the way around the shapes to give it a nice defining outline so that is how far I've got at the moment and uh, against set against the original now the mouth I'm not too happy about the mouth at the moment but it's brought out the round shape or the oval shape of this this bit here you see here how round that is so that is there and at the moment it's a totally different perspective because the teeth are here but this detail will be put in later so it's showing um, quite an unusual shape unless you can actually see the, the round shape that's there I'm just going to pop that over and you can see how see it's taking shape there now the, I've cut out the five shapes one two three four five shapes to the hat now I have actually chosen some colors for this the original colors were red and yellow but I'm going to do them in green didn't really want to introduce more colors but yes I have but I have but I think the greens will complement the red that I've used for the face especially as the hat is just above the face so hopefully I'm going to have to round that off and there we go yes yeah, so hopefully the, the um, red and green together will complement each other now keep this part keep all the pieces that you throw that you think are rubbish but keep those because I'm sure we'll revisit those later right so all those need to be cut out and just as before I'm going just going to lay these pieces on so I want a different color for the feather assuming that I'm not going to use a real feather and I'll just pin these on and as before I'm going to cut them out and lay them on and as soon as I've laid them on I'll get back to you and show you how it's looking at this stage I should fill these in these shapes here with the slow stitch as I've done here but I'm going to edge it with blanket stitch and the blanket stitch is that stitch there from our little booklet it makes a really nice edge and it's also very decorative now I'm not doing this edge because that's going to join the hair this edge I haven't decided yet what sort of edging it will possibly be blanket stitch as well which that is as I said earlier um, but this definitely is going to be blanket stitch so to do that and once again I've used the big darning needle with a big eye to take the thick thread and some nice hessian or burlap um, so you can see it now quite easy to do in from the back knot your your thread nice knot in from the back now imagine this is the piece that you're going to apply so on here imagine that you're now going to apply the feather imagine that's the feather you're going to apply that to the background fabric and all we do is come through the background over to the feather now the width is up to you you might want a narrow stitch you might want it wider but I'm going to make it wide so you can see what's going on so in there back into the background now your thumb is holding this thread down into the background pull it as long as you want the stitch so if you want the stitch that length you're going to pull the thread there keep your thumb on there and then you're going to go back down whoops back into the loop at the length 
that you want the stitch and just gently pull it there you go once again with your thumb hold this thread in place like that over back into the background like that and then down you go again in there and that holds it holds the stitch down once again hold that down with your thumb into the background as long as you want the stitch there you come through there you're making a square there you go do another one whoops can't get that straight we'll do a nice long one this time no I'm not I'll, I'll save that for another time there you go blanket stitch and to finish off your row all you're going to do is go into the corner here at the side tiny tiny little stitch that's it that isn't going to undo now go into the back catch it to stop it running if you've got a fine thread catch it a couple of times and maybe knot it to put your needle through because fine threads can walk th free they can wiggle or wiggle and they can actually escape thicker threads don't tend to do that so there you go that is blanket stitch so I'm going to carry on now possibly with a slow stitch as well definitely with a blanket stitch and let's see what what we come up with the top stitching's just been completed on the hat so this is that part of the hat there and then the feather with the flower that will go on later and then the other part of the hat the other side of it <clears throat> so what I've decided to do here I had a sort out and I know this isn't a feather but it actually looks like a feather in fact I believe I used one of these in the Picasso rooster um, as a feather in yeah, I'm sure I did. So any of you who saw that will will maybe recognise that leaf um, as something I've used as a feather before. So anyway, I'm going to pop that down there. You see here, the feather there. Pop that there. And then for the flower here, that the blue flower, I've cut out this from a piece of lace. Let me see if... I've cut out that from a piece of lace and I'm going to pop that here. I'm not sure which way round. Um, no, maybe that way because then we've got the round bit of the flower protruding into the, the bit there that is protruding. So I'm going to pop that down there, pin them and I should stitch those on. I'm not sure what stitch I'll use. I might just um, over sew them in different places just to hold them down. I've already done the slow stitching on the back. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure I want to do slow stitching on this. Otherwise it might make it just a bit too thick there. So at the moment I think I might just satin stitch or straight stitch and all that really is, is just stitches across, stitches across, like over sewing. So that is that part. Right, so that's that bit there. The hair, um, I haven't given much thought to at the moment. But this hair, this side here, I've decided, and I've already cut that out. That's the piece that, oh it's getting very difficult to do this now. This is the piece that went down there okay and the ear there what I'll do is I'll applique the ear and the earring on and not cut round there because it's going to be too fiddly so I've already cut that out so this piece will go down here 
right there um let's have a look right a little bit of over of overlap in there but that really doesn't matter it adds to the dimension oh let's move that down no oh, there isn't that much actually because the ear will go there see that gap there the ear will go there so this will be sewn down as well and this probably will be done in um, slow stitch because if we look I know we're not trying to replicate the, the painting but as an idea you can see oh, that's a wonky old pin right you can see here it isn't just one colour it's a mixture I'm going to just to enlarge that a little bit and that's better you can see it isn't just black along there there are other colours stranded there there's yellow um, light blue dark blue pink and green a little bit of white so I think this is what I should do here slow stitch um, down here and maybe in different colors um, what else are oh, the eyes the eyes the eyes where are the eyes right so here this bit came off naturally with cutting something else so we need to cut the eyes out now I'm going to put the eyes in place the eyes so so we have one eye there now we want to get that round about the same ah, there we go right now if we pop the eye back in there we know we've got the eye where it should be although on these cubists portraits I don't think it makes much difference when you've got the teeth veering off towards the chin and a nose somewhere else and, and um, so it doesn't matter really does it right so we need the second eye so we take that second eye now these eyes I might possibly applique so take them I should be taking them off again and maybe applique as I've said before it's really hard to plan this because or any piece of work because it does change as you complete one little area it changes another area which changes what you had in mind there we go that's the eyes so um that math look is looking very scary isn't it i can't wait, i can't wait to deal with that um so my next task will be to sew this down the feather, I might call that a feather, we know it isn't, but it looks like a feather. To sew the feather and the flower down. To do the, the hair, um, the ear needs to be done. I'm not too worried about the ear at the moment. That will get done, but not necessarily at the same time as I'm doing the hair. And then the eyes. I've put the flower in place and I've sewn it down. Now the feather has been sewed down with the slip, uh, the running stitch or the slow stitch this has been over sewn and all over sewn is is a stitch coming from the background through the back to the front and as it sounds just over sewn back into the back and then moved on and then done the, the same and that's repeated all the way around um, so the eye as you can see I've put the eyes on as well now the eyes have been applied that's a plique and it's th three 
pieces of fabric have the black net in there I'll just very carefully hold that up there's black net in there and then there's a small ring of lemon on a white eye shape <laughs> on a white shape I should say the stitches used on this are herringbone around the edge for the eyelashes blanket stitch around the lemon bit and one single cross stitch now because this is red a nice bright red the black netting the black net shows up lovely and it complements the red but when I place black on here obviously it didn't notice black on black it couldn't see it so that is why I've chosen to do this white I'm still going to use the black, the black thread on here for the eyelashes but to give it the depth that's got nice depth I'm using white right just to refresh in case you need a little bit of refresh refreshiness I think I've just made that up going to do I'm going to show you how to do the herringbone and the herringbone is a lovely stitch you can do so much with this come in there at what we're going to call the bottom we're going to slant it I'm going to do these extra large so that you can see how it's done so slant it and go in where you want it to finish then you bring it over now you're going to bring it out here okay not there you're not going to square it that would be cross stitch so we're going to bring it in there and then down here all right down here level with this one the same on the same thread if you like of that one there then we're going to repeat that again the same distance that there is between there imagine that's half an inch say that's half an inch we're going to bring it at half an inch there so in there and we do that process again slant it the same line the same thread as there and same distance again and that is herringbone now when we're using it in an arty crafty way we can do what we want we can make them short long fat thin we space it as we want to we can make it a short one next to a long one for interest for texture we could then make a nice long one down here it's entirely up to you how you use your herringbone on your work okay you see it takes on a different look completely so this the herringbone is what I'm going to do for the eyelashes and I'm go also going to do it up here for the fringe for the hair so that's herringbone the next one is cross stitch so we're going to slant it that way and then we're going to put the stitch over here directly underneath that one now it should be equally distance and then over there now th it, this one is in line with that and it's in line with that so it's right here on the little angle if you like and that is your cross stitch and then you just repeat it over here same distance as that you want the same distance there over there now when we do this you can join it you don't have to touch these the legs don't have to touch when we do this um, on our work 
we can vary it like the herringbone we can have long and short and fat ones and thin ones all on the same place all different all different um, sizes thicknesses for that contrast that we want the contrast to get the texture so that is that and you'll need to do this in the eyes now mine are basically i mean they, these are different sizes doesn't matter and they're practically perfect crosses <laughs> but they didn't have to be i could have done them um wonky if you like so that's the two stitches there now i'm just going to show you how i'm doing the herringbone here for the eyelashes and i have started it so just as i showed you on the example in that way and over now these will be different sizes it's not all going to be uniform they're not all going to be the same length the same width so there we have a big one there against a small one and as I said this is exactly the same thing I'm going to do for the fringe the thread I'm using here is still the cotton thread and I'm using it for strands of cotton. have to be careful when you're using sewing cotton because it does not. It strands and it knots while you're using it. Oh, I need to pull that a bit tightly from the back, a bit tighter from the back so that is how far i've got it is now taking on a look of the painting although the colors have been changed um i think it is taking on a look i might possibly do the tear as well if you can see there is a tear running down the face here i might do that and the ear but all this is is applique to um thicknesses of net so all these are just running stitches um to make up the hair now the fringe here this is made up of herringbone stitch long short if i lift it up slightly you might be able to see that a bit better and i've just intertwined some black thread going crosswise just to break it all up and to help couch down some of the longer threads couching down is just a way of holding down a long thread by sewing over it i'm going to start with that one here now this is actually black yellow and a little bit of green there i'm going to do it in satin stitch to get this straight line here, I've drawn a line for guidance. Now, I'm going to do what I normally do and just show you one here. Right, I've already drawn the line here, okay? And I've slanted it because that is actually slanted. All you're going to do is put a little bit of a baseline there and that will make it easier to keep to the straight line just a tiny row of running stitches you could use back stitches if you wanted to so the eyebrows have now been finished there's one there and one there i've loosely tacked on the ears here it's green felt or and a small cut out flower from a piece of lace now what I will do, I'm going to sew these down the same way as I did the eye with blanket stitch, maybe a little bit of cross stitch. Um, here are the fingernails, fingers and the fingernails to also loosely tack down as well. Not quite sure how to sew those down at the moment, whether to do the slow stitch or tiny blanket stitch. I think the slow stitch might be better on that but we'll see we just wait and see the mouth as you can see i removed that monstrosity and i think i've actually placed replaced it with another monstrosity but let's see how this one panned out 
so at the moment I've placed that there it is looking best I think it's actually looking better um, I've cut out the same shape there's lace underneath but obviously the lace has now been hidden but I did cut out the same shape in red and I've cut the teeth out in felt now here are the teeth so the teeth match the felt and this is the bit underneath like the lower lip so I've cut that out that looks as if it needs a little bit of refining I've cut that out and I've added the top bit. I can't find the bit that goes around the top, the top lip, the top lip there. So that is actually true to the painting. So let's just wait and see how it ends up. But so the next step is for me now to secure these, decide on the stitches and secure those. Um, I might actually do this as well. This is the, th the thumb. So but just going to see how far I can get. I cut out this shape again, this white shape. Um, if you see there, I've cut this bit out on the reference one, on the other um, photocopy piece. I've cut this out and I've popped it here over what was already there, the slow stitch on the white fabric. It looked too pink. I didn't like the pink, so I thought I was going to cover that up, which I've done here. And I've actually put lace underneath to give the the um, impression of a hanky, like here. So this is like a handkerchief with a hand over it. Now what I need to do next, oh, let's take that off. What I need to do next is just put the markings. Let me, oh, it's a little ruler. I'm just going to put some markings in here to the fingers just so that you can see the fingers more clearly so those go along here I've actually cut these shapes out the finger shapes out if you can uh, it's not showing too well is it but if you have a look down here you might be able to see the lace peeping through the gaps between the fingers now I quite like this and I think now um, I've had it hanging on the wall for a little while just so I can come in and out of the room and see it with fresh eyes and see if there were any changes needed but the mouth is actually taking shape now I think I'm going to slow stitch all this area down the fingers um, and then the, the, uh, the thumb here needs to be put down, tack down and over here and then I shall start shading little bits of shading over here I'm not sure that's coming out little bits of shading over there underneath the hat so there and maybe some here like the pink this pink here just to give it a bit more texture and a bit more depth but just for the time being, I'm going to carry on round here. I've pinned it, so I think I will possibly tack it in place. You don't need to see me do that anymore. You know what tacking is. And then I will start slow stitching it. Right, what I've done, um, I've put the tear in here. That's chain stitch with just uh, one single uh, French knot there like the little circle here i've put the frown line in here fingers i've put see the fingernails here i've put the fingernails in here one there and another one there the teardrop here i've put here and that is straight stitch or satin stitch let's call that satin stitch once again with one single french knot for this little piece there the chin I've put the markings in here for the chin you see the markings there the chin and this is back stitch oh these to separate the fingers it's running stitch running stitch here and the hanky here I've gone over the hanky which is this bit here 
I've gone over the hanky in slow stitch. Now the shading, very quickly, the shading I'm going to use an assortment of netting. I'm going to sit and play around to see what works well. So as you can see this is now finished. I did the shading as on the as shown on the painting. I've also sewn the front to what will be the back here being the same size as this which is eight inches seam allowance nine inches so this was nine inches there'd be half an inch here for the spine and then another nine inches or eight inches here for the back and then there'd be I think four inches over either end for the tuck where the the um, fold fold of front and backs will be tucked in to these here in fact this is what I've more or less used as a template it's um, a dust cover dust jacket from a book so here we have the front obviously and the front there so place them there with a small spine here match that there and then the back here the extra fabric will be this piece here so that will go in there then we have more extra fabric there so that will go there just pull that down a little way like that and it will close up like that now I've machine sewn these down no secret so we have right sides together the right side of this fabric to the right side of the weeping woman and then just sewn down I've done this twice just to strengthen that and here as well right side to right side machine down I've also chosen um, a lining and this lining is exactly the same size as the front the whole of the front now this will be machine sewn right side of the lining to right side of the design at one end I'm, at one end I'm going to leave about four inches open and why that will be left open is so I can pull the whole thing once it's sewn up and through the hole and turn it inside out now before I do that obviously I need to machine sew from there all the way around the whole of this piece of fabric all the way around just leaving about four inches open and that will be hand sewn later all sewn around I'm going to pull it into the other side now after I've just clipped the corners be careful when you clip the corners not to touch the stitching otherwise you're weak there's the four inches well it looks actually looks smaller than four inches through that little hole there just going to very carefully pull it into the right side you see once you start it it comes through quite easily so just pull that right the way through oops sorry if that um, wobbled a little bit this is always the exciting moment to see what it looks like right so it's into the right side these corners need pushing out you can do that with a pin or something pointed but um, not sharp a pointed but blunt I'm going to actually do it with a pin um, a pen now just be careful not 
to push whatever you're pushing like the pen that you don't come through the fabric any little bit that remains you can just drag out with a pin right where are the other two oops I've got to go right no, I didn't see the opening there so for those we've got to go right inside up to the corner and push it out now I might have to secure these flaps the side flaps down because with paper it's okay a nice firm card strong paper it's okay like our example book cover so did you see that then the pen came out yeah like the example book cover it's paper so when you fold it it stays where it is but this won't stay in place you can't fold that to stay in place so I might well in fact I will do I'm going to over sew these ends now the over sewn stitch we've done before and it really is just a tiny tiny stitch going from one side of the fabric over to the other side and then through and over again so you literally are over sewing lose the knot inside like that lose the knot inside push it out of the way and the over sew I'll lift this up a little bit so you can see it just over and through over and through over and through and that is over sewing see how easy that is and that's all I'm going to do in the opening there and when I turn back the flaps so let's have a look and just see how it's looking I should go and press this now so here it is finished at front as you can see back as you can see and inside there's the flaps now the flaps are nice and wide enough to hold any papers designs ideas notes whatever you want to do the back also has a nice pocket here oops let's move that over or if your uh, cover isn't sitting properly what you can do is just tie it with an elastic band pop elastic band in there or some ribbon tie it tightly and that will keep it all together this one doesn't actually need it so I should take that out there is a similarity I think the colours have changed um, have given the illusion of different proportions but we know they're not different because it was traced so this looks more prominent than here um, and I think the effect of the colours have made a very different emotional effect this one is horrific and it is sad and it's painful when I look at this one I can't help feeling that it takes on a rather gothic feel by the colour for a start and that wasn't intentional the red and the black and even um, the teeth that, that are vaguely reminiscent of a skeleton which goes with the gothic theme so it's amazing how the colour has changed the emotional response so I think that has been really interesting I mean I had a feeling it would but the colours weren't chosen for that so um, I think it's an experiment <laughs> for me which you all got caught up in um, it's really interesting and I would be interested to know that if you do this and you choose different colours you might choose complementary colours now that would be interesting red and green blue and orange and so on that would be really interesting because you would get another type of effect but um, I'm quite pleased with this um, I feel sorry for, sorry for Dora if she really looks like this she wouldn't have gone unnoticed would she <laughs> hi Sue 
certainly haven't done her any favours. I'm sure she didn't have teeth like this. So, um, having said that, I hope you enjoyed that. And do give it a try. And I look forward to some of your comments. Well, to all your comments, I should say. Anyway, just keep safe wherever you are. And um, just look after each other. That's all we can do at the moment. Anyway, things are getting good. They're getting brighter. It's all very optimistic, although at times it doesn't feel like it. But if you do like this, please give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate the likes. Oops, there it is. That's it. And um, just take care.